so much. We're also going to go into a moment of just giving tithes um, as a form of worship to God. Uh, there's going to be a lot of giving today, okay? So just brace yourselves. We're going to have a good time, amen? All the CCTV cameras are switched off, okay? But Jesus is watching. Cool. Cool. Um, why, why, am I, why are we doing our tithes and offerings? Because I don't want you to be under the false impression that what we're going to do at the end of the service through our miracle offering is about you reallocating your tithes to the offering. That's not how it works. The tithe belongs to God. It is His, and it's, our, it's the first portion that we worship God with our finances. So we give that back to Him first, and then we can participate in the miracle offering thereafter. And so um, for those who are sitting on the aisle seats um, on, the, on my left, your right, just pick up the bucket. Don't pass it down, please. Just give everybody an opportunity. Um, I know that most of us are EFT givers, so thank you so much. I think it's the best way to give. It's also the safest way to give. And so, but if you do have any um, cash that you want to use into the offering bucket this morning, you see just moving the bucket. Like I just, I distinctly remember asking no one move the bucket. <laughs> I'm not a control freak, okay? <laughs> um, uh, no, I'm lost. But anyway, we're going to pray, and then we're going to worship God with our tithes and offerings. If you've got money with you, if you want to give into your tithe, please feel free to do that. Otherwise, on your seats, there's an offering envelope. You can use that. The EFT details are all on there. And the banking details are still uh, View Church Sunningdale. Uh, we are waiting for SARS. So if anyone knows SARS or can pray for SARS, please pray. Amen. So Father, we thank you so much uh, for your provision. Lord, right now we want to worship you with our tithes. I pray, God, that you would bless it indeed. Thank you, Father, that you're our provider. And right now, God, we want to honor you and worship you with our giving. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. So please pass those containers down. I am so thankful that you guys came to church this morning uh, because we're going to have a good time and we're going to see God move. Hasn't it already been fantastic? Hey, just celebrating God, worshiping together. It's been so good. Um, I want to encourage you to just turn to the person you didn't speak to just now and ask them a simple question. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Turn to the person to the other side that you spoke to the first time and said, and say, are you ready for this? <laughs> and if you're single and you're sitting next to a single person, how you doing? <laughs> no, no, okay, 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 it's a little, all right. 2 Kings 4 verses 1 to 7. The wife of a man from the company of prophets cried out to Elisha, your servant, my husband is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, how can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside, shut the door behind you and your sons, pour oil into the jar, into all the jars, and as each one is filled, put one aside. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and kept and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, Bring me another. She replied, but he replied, There is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and, and he said, go, sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Let's just quickly pray. God, thank you for your word. I pray that your word would be opened up to us, that we would hear from God, hear from you, hear from heaven today, and that, Lord, that you would produce a harvest of righteousness on the inside of us, and that our lives would bring you glory. So God, help us to focus, help us to pay attention and help us to be transformed. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I remember um, when I was working for a, uh, a, a, an appliance company, we would have a, like a sales conference every year. Now that's always fun because you're pretty much going to spend company money and have a great time doing it, right? It was fantastic. I, I was not really a salesperson, but I was, I was, I was like the in-house sales 
person that helped the salespeople, okay? And, and salespeople are a special breed. If you, know, if you know a salesperson, you know what I mean, right? They are a special breed. Um, but we went, I remember we were in Johannesburg or, uh, at the time and um, flew up there, and we got everybody together, and we did this, like, white river rafting. Has anybody done white river rafting before? Yeah, it's one person, two people. I feel like it's an auction. Um, and, and, it's, and it's good fun. But like I have never done it before at that point. So I go and like I'm thinking, you know, I've seen, I've seen the Discovery Channel. I, I, I've seen these like sporting competitions of these huge white water rapids. I'm thinking this is where we go to die. But I'm like over the first one. And you know, you go over the first one and they ease you in. And it's like a little one. It's like a ripple. It's actually not even a rapid. It's like... It's the water's turned white because it went over a little stone. And there was like, I felt such a rush. I was like, whoa, ah, ah, I'm so alive. Because I'm such an adrenaline junkie, right? And little things get me going. But um, I remember like the, the first part, because a lot of us hadn't done it. Um, and so they get you going. They get you into like these rafts. And you're in a team. And you've got to row. But there's some people that are overzealous rowers. And there's other people who couldn't be bothered to row because it's going to break a nail or like, I don't know. And, and, and so a lot of the boats would actually just go in circles. Because if you're rowing in a boat and you're pushing too much on the one side, you kind of turn and you need the counterbalance. You need the other people in the boat to be rowing with you at the same speed or at least having someone like counter row so that you're going forward. Because you can have power here, but if you've got no steering on the other side, you're going fast, but you're going nowhere. And so by the time you hit the rapids, you've got like, you to get this thing sorted out. Otherwise, you're going over the rapids sideways, and that's not how you want to go over a rapid, right? That's how you go for a swim. And, and it was so funny, like you, you'd see, like in the beginning, people are just trying to get used to this and going around in circles. And really the point of that whole story is that if we want to go forward, you've got to go as a team. You've got to go together. It's you in the, in the community of your boat. You, you might be the biggest, strongest, athletic person, but if you don't have other people in the boat rowing with you in a boat like that, you're going nowhere quickly. Even Olympic rowers, those big teams, they have to row in perfect synchronization because you can be the most gifted rower, the most gifted sportsman, but you need other people. And so that's why in this message I've titled it, the miracle is in community. The miracle is in community. I say this because we read the story in Kings about Elisha and this woman who has lost her husband and her sons are being sold into slavery to pay for their debt, for her husband's debt. But you see, the, we, we focus on that and we see, look at what God has done through this incredible woman's faith. And it is about that. But there's so much more to that. There's actually community happening around this woman because this woman couldn't fill any jars that someone didn't give to her already. She had to go to her immediate community and ask them for jars. She couldn't just see the miracle come to pass on her, on her own or by itself. She needed community. Our impact, if you're taking nothing away, take this away. Our impact is greater together. Our impact is greater together. There can be a billionaire sitting in this, in this building today, and they can give a million rand today. And that's fantastic for them. But we will always have a greater impact when we give together. Yeah. We, can have, and, and, and we can have people who are mightily gifted. We can have people who are preaching to thousands. But if, there aren't, if there's no community serving those, th those thousands, we're not building anything that's going to last. Our impact is greater together. In a rowboat, our impact is greater together. In the church, our impact is greater together. In your life group, the impact is greater together. In your business, impact is greater together. We are not called for isolation. God has never designed us to be alone, to be a one-person impact show. Yes, one person's life surrendered to God can have a major difference, but it will never be as much as a community together. And so if we all bring what we have, we lack nothing. So, I'm, so the message today is for us that God works great miracles through community. God works great miracles through community. 
And so in this passage, we see that she went to her community. Can I get those, those jars? Sorry. Thanks, babe. Thanks, honey. Thank you. So she went to her, the, the, the prophet says, listen, you need to go to your neighbors. You need to go to your community. You need to go to the people that you break bread with. You need to go to the people that babysit your kids when you're working or the kids, the people that you babysit their kids when they're out in the fields, when they're doing their thing. The people that you have relationship with, your community, and you need to go ask them to help you. God's going to do a great miracle, but it depends on your community. If, she, if the community said no to her, she would not have had enough jars to fill for oil, for oil to flow. It's only because the community gave jars that she actually had jars to fill. She exhausted all of her jars. Now she's going to Bruce next door. She's going to Jemima. She, like the kids are going to like Alex's house, right? They're like knocking on doors, knocking on things. Hey, please, I, we, we, we've got this thing. The man of God said like, we need to ask for jars. Like, could you give us a jar? Like, we would love it. We're going to fill it with oil. Ah, oh, I didn't know you came into oil. No, we don't have, we've just got a little bit of oil, but, but, but we're going to see what God's going to do. And so they went to the community. The more that they gave to her, the greater her miracle became. It wasn't a miracle of five jars. It was a miracle that every empty jar in the community was used and utilized. I actually think she became pretty wealthy after this, selling her oil. So ask for as many um, vessels as possible. And also, the miracle starts in your own house. Did you notice how, the, how Elijah, Elijah says to her, listen, what, do you, what have you got? Oh, I've got nothing. Isn't that so amazing? We all have that response. Like, that's why we just say to you guys, when we come to this miracle offering, just pray and ask God what He wants you to do, and that's going to be more than enough. Because we go, oh, I don't have to give. But she's like, I've got nothing, nothing in my whole house. I'm poor. I have two kids that are being sold into slavery. How can you ask me what I have in my house? If I had something in my house, do you think I'd be here? But she's like, except for a little bit of oil. She's like, ah, that's all that I need. That's enough. The little bit that you have, it, the miracle always starts in your own house. There's always something to give, even if it is just a little. I love it how God uses little practical things in our lives to actually fulfill great promises and to fulfill great miracles. You might say, today for this miracle offering, so I go, oh, geez, I mean, I, I actually wasn't going to give today. And that's totally cool. I promise you. I promise you. That's totally cool. But you might say, I don't want to give because a hundred rand is too small. For who? For you or for God? Because God could multiply a little jar of oil because the community got involved. Imagine the impact we have together. When we all bring something, God can do something magnificent in it. So he just says, what do you have? What is practical in your hand? Remember with Moses, he said, Moses, that staff in your hand, yeah, I'm going to use that. With this lady, that oil that you have at home, I'm going to use that. God will use what you have no matter how much you have. So for her, like, I'm a widow, I, I don't have much, or I'm a student, right? Any students in the house? Students, like, they, they eat free food. <laughs> they don't have money. They got money for PlayStation, but they don't have money for food and the bare essentials of life. I'm a foreigner, I, I, I don't have. I'm a business person, my business is in a tricky place right now, I don't have. I'm an artist, artists never have. <laughs> I'm retired, I, I, I don't have because what I have is supposed to, you know, I'm starting my career, I, I don't have, I, I don't even have a couch at home. The economy is low. You know, the bank, in, like the repo rate went up by 0.75% this week. You came to church for good news, amen. <laughs> There's so many reasons I don't have, but actually God just says to you, what do you have, Amen. And what was the limiting factor of, her, of this miracle? Do you think it was her faith? Her faith was not the limiting factor because she did what the prophet said. Go to the homes, knock on the doors, ask the people. It wasn't her vision that was the limiting factor. 
because she could she believed the, the the man of God and she had a great vision that her sons weren't going to be sold into slavery but they would have more than enough to get through this difficult time it wasn't what she had that was the limiting factor in fact it was the avenue that God was going to use it wasn't the oil that was the limiting factor because the oil never stopped flowing. It wasn't God's power that was the limiting factor. It was actually just the amount of vessels that was the limiting factor. The man of God said, when the jars stop, the oil stops. When the, jars, when the community stops giving, the oil will stop flowing. And therefore, if we believe and act together, our impact will be greater. And really today, what we're saying is, God, what do you want us to do, and how can we be a vessel for your use? That's it. That's it. Very, very simple. Everyone has a different capacity to give. The size and the amount varies from person to person. So that's why I got these jars, right? Because what I love about it is Elisha didn't say, Dumi, listen, I need you to find jars that are 450 milliliters each. If it's less than that, don't take it, okay? I only want the big jars, okay? He didn't say that. He said, whatever empty jars you find, whatever empty jars people can give. And so it's actually, it's not about amount. It's about what is, we all have a different capacity. We have a different capacity for God to use us in different ways. It's just about being faithful to that capacity. Some gave her a big jar. They were rich and they were wealthy and they had this massive jar just lying around. In fact, I don't know, maybe they were thinking of planting like herbs in there. I don't know what they were going to do, but they said, hey, if you can use it, use it, Right? There might have been a widow right next door who said, listen, my son made this art project at school, and um, you can have it. If it's going to serve, if it's going to help, you can, you can do it. Some people, probably a lot of people gave like an average size jar that they were storing their own oil in, and their oil finished and said, hey, you can use the jar that we have. Some people gave three jars. Some people got one jar. But there wasn't thank you notes that was written out to the people that gave the big jars. God saw every empty jar as a vessel to be used for a miracle that would bring Him glory and would see all of her needs met. And so we all have a dis different capacity. I don't want you to think, oh, I've got a million rand to give today in Jesus' name. That's a joke. Let's lighten up. A million rand to give today. Oh, man, I'm the chief giver amongst givers. Maybe. Maybe. But God knows your heart, God knows your capacity, and God holds you accountable to your capacity. He doesn't hold you accountable to your amount. For some people, it's like, oh, man, I've, I've got my Christmas bonus. Oh, man. <laughs> Why is this miracle offering around the year, the time that I get my Christmas bonus, right? I please, Jesus, may you get your Christmas bonus. Amen. And some people have been saving up. I've got a granny who saves up all year to give into the miracle offering. She's almost, she's 90. She saves up. That's incredible. You might be 14 years old. Whew. I got my pocket money from this week. I was going to buy, I was going to buy a new Ro a Roblox skin, but I'll. <laughs> Capacity is not what's important. Faithfulness is what's important. And so we all have a different capacity. Our impact is greater together. Three areas, three scriptures that I'm not going to read, but I'm going to just let you know about. Where the impact in the community was greater than what one person could do. Moses said to the whole Israel community in Exodus 35 that, hey, God wants us to give to build the tabernacle. So the whole community went away from Moses and, and sought the Lord. And it says, whoever was willing, whoever was willing and had, they brought an offering. And in fact, the offering was so large, they, ple they begged them, please guys, stop giving. It's more than enough. In Acts chapter 4, verse 32, we find that there are the New Testament church. It says that all the believers were in one heart and mind. They were unified. They were in it together. And what they ended up doing is some believers would sell excess property and put the money into the offering so that the poor believers among them would get a share of it so everyone would have something. That's what Barnabas did. This is not a normative scripture, but it is an example. 
In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, we find that Paul is traveling through and writing to all the, 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 the New Testament churches, and he's actually collecting an offering together for the churches that are in Judea that are going to go through an incredible famine. And they're actually taking up an offering, preparing people in advance, and taking up an offering so that everyone in the churches in Judea would have more than enough food through a famine period. So we see that the impact is always greater together. And so today, I want to give you four pieces of advice that are going to give you peace of mind before we give. This is from Paul in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9. So if you are taking notes, these are just four very quick things I'm going to share, and then I'm going to close. Number one is Paul says, look for the opportunity to give. He says, be willing to give in 2 Corinthians 8 verse 12. For if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. In 2 Corinthians 8 verse 7, Paul says, see to it that you excel in the grace of giving. He says, I've seen that you excel in faith, you excel in all these different areas. Excel also in the area of giving. So look for opportunities to give. Number two is to give cheerfully. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, Paul says, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion or because Swen bends your arm or because the atmosphere in the room makes you feel guilty. For God loves a cheerful giver. I love it that he says you've got to pre-decide what you're going to give so that you don't get swept up in the emotion of giving. Because it's so easy to be swept up in the emotion and be like, I feel bad, I feel guilty, let me put something in. That's not what it's about. It's having, making a decision that this is what we're giving today or this is how we're going to be involved. So decide, be willing, and be cheerful about it. I, re I remember I've, I've often given and be like, fine, God, <laughs> take it. And the blessing is always on the receiving end, but I never got the blessing of the giving because my heart wasn't right in the giving. And so whatever it is, let's be cheerful about it. If you can't be cheerful, rather actually don't give. Number three, Paul says, to give according to your capacity, not what you don't have. 2 Corinthians 8.12, for if the willingness is there, the gift is, is acceptable according to what one has. So in another place, Paul says, give in accordance with your income. So what he is saying is, don't spend discoveries money in the offering today. Do not spend Standard Bank, FNB, Investec. Don't spend their money today because that's just digging a deeper hole for yourself. People get this wrong idea that if I just give more, God's going to bless me super abundantly with like finances. So I'm going to sow massively from discovery today, get all the points, <laughs> get all the extra credits, right? All the miles, yeah. And God's going to fill my bank account. I'm going to give to the level of my miracle that I want. No, that's called manipulation. And you'll find God's not easily manipulated. No, give out of what you have. Remember the prophet said to, said to her, what have you got? Not go borrow something that you need. Right? Okay, just exercising some financial wisdom. And number four, and our team can come up to prepare us to give is you reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, this is all the same letter, the same context. He's saying, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. You actually reap what you sow. If you... So in greed and stinginess, that's what you will reap. The, pro the writer of the Proverbs says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, but the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. The way to a bigger world is actually through generosity. Whether you give today or not, this remains true. And what I'm encouraging you to do is say, God, how can we give generously? There's been so many times in... Um, in our walk with God, Lara and I, that we've gone to a conference and I'm like, oh, flip, man, the offering. I forgot all about the offering. Because I'm like, I'm lastminute.com. I am Cape Tonian through and through, right? I'll see how the wind blows and then I'll make my plans. 
and I, I just call it prophetic. And so I go to these things, or we go, and, and, and often I'm like, God, I, I, I actually can't give today. Like, I don't know how we can give. Like, I've, I've got to buy that new pair of shoes, you know, Adidas. Don't give me anything else, right? And I have this list of things, especially around this time of the year. It's this, 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 and this, and then what else do we have? And God always reminds me, He says, I'm the one who gives you what you need. So I'm always just trying to respond to him. I remember the one year I went to Australia. I might have shared this with the church before. I went to Australia, and um, they, there was a big giving towards this conference. And I had no intention to give at the conference. But I felt moved in the moment. I felt like God speaking to me. And I was actually, God, like, I, 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 want, I need breakthrough in some areas of my life, God. I, and I don't know what to do, but I'm going to give. And I actually had all the Aussie dollars in my wallet, I emptied it out into the offering. And then God said to me, yeah, is like, there's more. I'm like, no, God, there's not more. And God, there's more. And I remember that um, I said, okay, God, I'm going to believe you for this. And I put down an amount. And my strategy was, because I don't have anything on me, I'm not going to give with my credit card. I'm going to give it later. And so what happened was I, I did give it later, except it took two years to give it later. Why? Because I was wrestling with God. God, you see what we have. You see our situation. You see what we desire. You see what we need. We're not only, I mean, I'm giving to this, but I've got to give to our own church. We've got to do this, 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 and this. And there's so many things. There's so many mouths to feed, right? There's, there's all this stuff going around. Like, God, how, are you kidding me? And every year, God would remind me, remember that offering? And I would stand up in front of the church, say, church, we're going to give today. And then God would remind me, remember the offering you still need to give? Uh, yeah, I remember that offering, God. And actually the one year I said, I did, we actually didn't have the money. And so I don't advise this unless God's telling you to do this. We didn't have the money. And I just said, like, we're going to give this now. And we did. And then that's actually the year that God opened up an incredible resource for us to even have this building in the first place. How did that happen? I don't know. But what I do know is when I released what I was supposed to release, God released what He always wanted for us in the first place. And you'll find that God loves you unconditionally, but there are some things you can only access by faith. And giving is always an act of faith. Because there are so many other things to give towards. There's your holiday, all these other things. In fact, I've I had to stop myself giving when Lara's not in the room because I end up giving Lara's money too. <laughs> I've done that so many times. I've like got to check myself. I'm trusting Phil's going to flow in that anointing too. <laughs> but you reap what you sow. And so don't give what you don't have. Don't give under compulsion. Give in response to what God has asked you to do. And so today, um, on, on your seats, uh, can you pass me those those? On your seats, you're going to find two forms, okay? You're going to find a, what are you believing God for? And Larry, you can actually join me on up here as well. Um, and on that form, I'm actually, we want you to write down anything that you're believing God for. Any breakthrough, any miracle, any secret, anything that you're saying, God, I'm laying this before you today. I'm going to, we're going to write on it. And then when we open up everybody for the opportunity to give, because there's two containers here, um, you can drop it into one of these containers. And they've got labels on it. Because what we as a church are going to do is we're committed to praying for, a, for what you're believing for to come to pass, for God to work a miracle. Our prayer team will have it. Our staff team will have it. And we will continue to pray into it. Because, yeah. The other form is a miracle offering form. And you're going to find there that it says, our greater miracle offering pledge form. I am giving a blank to the miracle offering. And there's ways to give. I encourage you, rather send it wirelessly, like EFT. That's just better uh, and cheaper. But if you have got cash, you can also give in cash using an envelope. And you can bring it into these containers. 
what we're going to do is we're going to worship God together. And then we're going to open it up for our staff to come and give first, because I always believe that we should lead by example. We never ask anyone to give and to sacrifice what we ourselves are not willing to do. And then we're going to open it up to everybody else here. And so one container says, what are you believing God for? And you put that form in there. And the container on the other side is the uh, pledge form. Please, I'm asking you this as a favor. Don't pledge a ridiculous amount that you're believing God for by the end of 2023. Put in there what you're believing God for by the end of December. Maybe you've paid it already. Maybe you'll do it this week. But let it not be your tithes reallocated into an offering. Let it be an over and above miracle offering, whatever that is. And we give God, uh, God thanks for that. And then next week, Sunday, we will tell you how much you guys gave into the offering. Okay, are you guys all right and ready for that? Okay, Lara, Lara's gonna lead us in a prayer and then we're gonna open up, I'll give you, okay, and then we'll open up for a moment of giving for our staff and then we'll allow everybody else to come to the front. And if you're dropping in blank forms, I promise you, no one will know. Just fold them. Okay. We're not excluding people. Everybody is welcome. And if you're only dropping in what you're believing God for, that's fine. God, thank you for this opportunity to give, Lord. I pray that you would fill every person's mind now with an amount, Lord, within their capacity and within their means. And God, I pray that great testimonies would come out of this, God, of your faithfulness, your goodness, yes, your, the miracles that you will do out of this, Lord. I pray you'd bless the offering, Lord, and you'd bless our hands to administer the offering faithfully in growing your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So you can take time to use those forms on your seats right now. Come up and give as well. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Church, can we stand to our feet, please? Nothing else. Let's worship God. Let's worship God with our songs, with our bodies. Let's worship Him with our giving this morning. I just want you. The rest of the church, you're welcome to come nothing to the front. No one's watching you. Everyone's worshiping. Amen. I want nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else.
Church, let's continue to worship. Church, we're going to continue to worship, and I, honestly, I am blown away by your giving and your generosity and how you've moved. I get a sense that God wants to release something today as well. And so you can, if anybody's not done, come yet, you're still welcome to come. But we're going to worship God for the remaining two or three minutes, and we want to pray, and we're going to lift up these prayers right now that you've popped into this container. So let's just take a moment to worship God, continue to believe God, and then we're going to pray together. And at the end of the service, if you want to pray for anything specific, please come to the front. They comfort us, God. Thank you, Lord, how you have prepared a table before our enemies, God, where our cup will overflow. Father, I thank you that you are our provider. I thank you that you are our miracle worker, God. I thank you, Father, that you bring what we need in the season that we need it, God. Lord, you have not left us, but you are with us, God. God, surely we will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Surely we will see our families healed. Surely we will see our businesses thrive. Surely we Nothing is too 
difficult for you, God. And so, Lord, we pray for breakthrough in all of these areas. And may they bring you glory and that you be exalted in the mighty name of Jesus. And if you believe that this morning, church, would you give God a great clap offering and a shout out?